is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM. We got markets right now slightly in the red to flat in the Russell. We're looking at an S&P negative by just one point. We take a look at the overnight action. You were lower at about 7 a.m. Eastern time. We'll jump over to the S&P. You're trading down about 44.50. We've caught a little bit of a lift since about 6.30, call it 7 a.m. Eastern time. We trade up about 12 points, back to almost even. NASDAQ 100, a little bit of volatility overnight as well, pretty much right in line with where we closed yesterday, looking at a price of about 15,500 on the dot as we speak. You get the Dow negative by three points, 34,625. We get the Russell flat at 22.28. It is triple witching. We get some expirations going on uh, today. Could add a little bit of volatility to the market session. We got crude sitting right at about $72, right at it as we speak to the penny, down 37 cents. We got gold off about $2 right now. Gold caught a little bit of a bid from the lows we had about 24 hours ago during the 9 o'clock hour yesterday, made it all the way up to almost 1768. And since then, a little bit of a sell-off at 6 a.m., got another sell-off at 8.30 a.m. You're trading at 1755 in the price of gold. Silver is positive by two pennies. Pretty similar action in silver. How about the move yesterday in silver? You traded down from 24 to 22.50. You're talking about a buck 50 almost in the price of silver in one day. Then you climb back above 23. We're trading at 23.82, and we jump to notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of lower price and higher yield, folks. Going to be interesting to see how this hits the market right now. We got the 10-year trading, trading down 10 ticks at 132.25. That's correlating to a yield of 1.37%. You take a look at that on a daily basis actually below where we were in terms of price on august 27th that low was 132.26 we're a tick below that low as well pointing to higher yields uh in this market we were chopping around since about august 26th you look where we were right actually going below that level right now pointing to a little bit of higher yields as we come into friday trading and we'll jump over to the vix volatility index this morning we're looking at a price tag of eight 1880 right now as we kick off Friday trading. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on in the market. We're going to start it off with a little Fed action. Why not? In terms of a survey of economists, they're looking for bond taper in November, and they're looking for a rate lift off in 2023. Did you hear that, folks? It's only 2021. We'll see. But that's just a survey of economists. Chairman Powell, be interesting to see what he has to say. We got a Fed meeting going on next week, Wednesday and Thursday, I believe, for September 22nd and 23rd. We'll get an, 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 excuse me, an announcement six days from now, I believe a press conference as well. Uh, it'd be interesting as we get rising yields going into that and we got a negative market coming into the open this morning. But the Federal Reserve will probably hint at its meeting next week that it is moving towards scaling back monthly asset purchases and make a formal announcement in November. If that's the case, is the market going to be sitting at all-time highs when we're only adding 200,000-plus jobs a month and the Fed's going to begin tapering bond purchases, asset purchases, I should call it? A survey of 52 economists also predicted the U.S. Central Bank would hold interest rates near zero through the entire next year, delivering two quarter-point increases by the end of the following year. You're talking about uh, end of 2023. They're only bumping things up half a percent. Uh, FOMC... Okay, there it is. So they meet Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's going to be 21st, uh, yes, 21st and 22nd uh, that they will be meeting. Yes, and the announcement due 2 p.m. on Wednesday. So Feb, uh, September 22nd, that is five days from right now. And then they'll have a press conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Two-thirds of economists surveyed expect bond buying announcement at the Fed's November 2nd to 3rd meeting with more than half seeing the tapering starting in December. 
That's a preponderance of the respondents there in that survey. That's earlier than the July survey, survey when a plurality expected the decision in December and four-fifths were looking for tapering to start in 2022. So they're up in that ante in terms of when the asset purchases are going to begin to taper. That survey was conducted within the last week, September 10th to 15th, as well as expecting liftoff in 2023. That's matching the median forecast for the Fed officials for their projection. The survey predicts three more increases in 2024 that lift the upper bound of the federal funds rate to 1.5 percent by the year end. Man, the end of 2024, if anybody tells you they know where we're going to be by the end of 2024. I mean, tell me where we're going to be by the end of today, folks, let alone where we're going to be by the end of 2024. Uh, boy, interest rates. I mean, that's quite a leap to be making estimations out that far, but that's what they're paid to do. Doesn't mean they're going to be right. Uh, Powell will still be at the helm for that policy normalization, according to an increasingly large majority of economists. So, of course, you got the Fed chairman up for another term and uh, the expectation is that President Biden will renominate him for another four year term after his current tenure as Fed chair expires in February. The tapering debate will be a central question for the FOMC next week. I imagine Chairman Powell is going to get some questions. That's for sure. Uh, in terms of when they're looking for and there's the kind of pie chart of when they're looking for November, as they said, about two thirds of when they're looking for uh, only two percent looking for September's meeting. So that would be an outlier in a big way if they start to taper those purchases. And with the inflationary data that Chairman Powell's gotten with the weak jobs numbers that we've seen coming out of August for a number of variables, that's where analysis and opinions play into things, why we've had that slowdown in terms of the jobs drawback, um, clawback, I should say, in terms of getting those jobs back. That's anyone's guess, but the policy group is expected to hold rates near zero and continue monthly purchases, 80 billion in treasuries, 40 billion in mortgage-backed securities, um, and that's where the market's looking in terms of November, 21% in December, 6% in October, and then you got two in September and 4% next year, outliers there. Uh, you add up November, December, and October, better way to put that probably, you add up October, November, December, and you're looking at, what is that, 94%? 94% sees the FOMC announcing tapering going on in either next month, the following month after that, or the last month of the year, December. It's coming, folks. It's here. It's going to be interesting to see how this market reacts when we finally get the official announcement of tapering to begin. That does not mean that they're going to be raising rates. The tapering will probably be the first step. Uh, raising interest rates probably far behind that uh, in terms of where they go for raising the rates. So some of the quotes out here in terms of what they're looking for, um, you had a stir in June, projection showing for the first time two rate hikes in 2023. There's just so much that needs to happen by the end of 2023 and 2024. I'm very interested in this analysis because we're only looking out one, two, three months. Not so interested in economists telling me where we're gonna be at the end of 2023 or even 2024. Uh, as we have a lot of market action, we have a lot of fundamental data. I mean, we we're talking to Teddy Kegstat yesterday, and I agree with him in terms of the the expectations on the economic numbers coming up, whether it's the non-farm payroll numbers, whether it's the CPI data coming out. Uh, every time we have a miss, it just pushes back the expectations to the next number. And the next three months are just going to be mammoth in terms of we got a lot of jobs to make up. And we aren't making them up at the pace that we were supposed to, especially with the market sitting at basically all time highs. We'll talk about it when we get back. Um, I mean, we got all the markets sitting basically between 1% and 2.5% from all time highs right now. A little bit of red on the board as we come into the open. We got about 15 minutes to go until that opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. 
try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at DFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by two points right now, trading at 44.62 with the NASDAQ negative by 14, Dow negative by 14 as well. And Russell in the red by about four points as we wait to kick off the trading on Friday. Triple witching, as we said, could see some volatility in the markets. Uh, jumping over to finish the conversation here about the Fed um, and part of what they're looking for. So three quarters of economists expect the Fed to slow purchases of treasuries and mortgage securities at the same pace rejecting suggestions of some policymakers to halt mortgage-backed security purchases first in light of a hot housing market. So you got treasuries in there and you got mortgage-backed securities, right? Three quarters of economists expect them to slow those both at the same time. Uh, there are people out there saying that you should really pull back on the mortgage-backed securities first in light of how hot the housing market is. That'll be one of the things we look for. The other area is how quick they're gonna do it in. Uh, you have some presidents they list uh, James Bullitt out there pushing for a quick taper to end purchases by 2022's first quarter. Now, I wonder what kind of positions in his own personal account Mr. James Bullard has. And if that's being influenced, that's going to be a little teaser to our next article we'll talk about in terms of Fed officials trading off of the policies that they are helping enact. Not sure that makes any sense or even how that's even legal. But nonetheless, we'll get into it. Uh, others have seemed more comfortable with a pace similar to the 2014 tapering of asset purchases, which lasted 10 months. A plurality of 33 percent look for an eight month taper, though nearly half are looking for 10 months or longer. There is the interest rates we talked about earlier in terms of when they're pushing those numbers out there. December 2024. Remember, they're looking for about 1.5 percent again. Good luck forecasting anything out to 2024, folks, when it is so difficult in terms of the variables that we're dealing with right now. Uh, and they get into faster growth and inflation, make a rate hike more likely. That's just common sense, folks, at that point. All right, jumping over. We'll, we'll do that as a little segue to this one. Um, in this article, this was out there a while back. Uh, let's see where we are. Yeah, so you have Chairman Powell directing staff to review the central bank's ethics rules. Um, I mean, Congress should just get their act together and make this illegal. It's crazy. Uh, after several Fed resident presidents disclosed large investments and stock trades. I mean, the, I pause here because to, to choose my words lightly, as in the Federal Reserve is a crucial element to our economy and helping stability. OK, we had 
rampant volatility before you had the Fed in there. So that is the argument, okay? Um, you have Fed presidents with enormous power to shape economic decisions when you control interest rates economy-wide. To give those people in particular the ability to trade individual stocks, individual sectors, specifically the real estate sector, okay? And what I'm going to get into here is that you have, whether it was Robert Kaplan, okay? He was in there, the Dallas Fed president. He was trading Apple, Amazon, Delta Airlines stock in 2020, okay? Even Apple and Amazon. Growth companies are massively impacted by interest rates, folks, okay? When you are buying a growth company, you are paying for the value of future earnings, okay? If you have very low interest rates, the value of future earnings is worth more. If you have very high interest rates, then the value of those future earnings might not be worth as more, especially if you have inflation coming in. That's a simple way to explain why some of these growth companies, you're obviously gonna have to pay more for capital as well, which might hurt your growth, all right? But you're paying for growth multiples in the future. If you have inflation in the future, okay, then those growth multiples aren't worth as much as they might be worth. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, to, to put it lightly, okay? Now, this gets into it in terms of the numbers. So, yeah, so you have Kaplan out there making multiple trades worth a million dollars or more in his individual stocks, including Apple, Amazon, and Delta. The one that really blew me away, um, Boston Fed president, yeah, Eric Rosengren held stakes in four real estate investment trumps, trumps, listen to that, trusts, and several purchases or sales of similar property owning vehicles. Folks, at a time when the Federal Reserve crushes interest rates to zero, you have Fed presidents plowing their money into real estate investment trump, uh, trusts, which just go through the roof. Um, you had, I mean, it's just everywhere. The, you know, he held stock Pfizer, right? Chevron, AT&T, tens or to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, it's just the, the purest definition of conflict of interest and with the amount of power that they have, um, even if legal, which it seems like it is, which is unfortunate, okay, you need to have faith in the Federal Reserve. We need to have faith in the Federal Reserve that they're acting in the best interest of the country, of the economy, all right? For these presidents out here, to erode faith in the Federal Reserve should kick them off that board. Making those trades alone, even if they knew they're legal, okay, erodes the whole trust in the fact that they are making decisions in the best interest of the economy and not in the best interest of their own purse. And that's just not the case. If you're a Fed official and you got millions of dollars in real estate investment trumps, trusts, I'll get there. I don't know why that's, that's sticking. Uh, if you got millions in real estate investment trusts, of course you're gonna to wanna to keep interest rates low. And maybe that's not the best thing for the economy. So why would you allow that to happen? It seems ludicrous. Um, so they're looking into that nonetheless. It happened and uh, shame on them in a big way um, because that's just, uh, even if legally allowed, they are eroding the institution by making those trades and they're smart enough to know that and they just don't care because they wanna make enough money on it. Um, so hopefully something gets done to do that, um, to do away with that ability. Now they've since said, oh, well, I won't do that anymore. We just had a, 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 a once in a lifetime market, folks, in terms of the pullback we had, interest rates go to zero, right? Stimulus is there. The Fed is a huge part of that stimulus. The market takes back off. Uh, certain sectors in particular, like real estate, accelerate through the roof. We're seeing a real estate boom um, that's just incredible. And you have Fed officials trading off all of that information, making millions of dollars in the process. That's not how it's supposed to work, folks. Not even close. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Uh, interesting story here as we wait for the open in terms of naming rights. Do you remember in the days where uh, stadiums just were named for the city, like the good old Boston Garden, the good old garden? Um, well, boy, talk about missing an opportunity back then. The Clippers, they're not missing an opportunity. How about a half a billion dollars for naming rights to Intuit, the tax uh, software company? Um just amazing in terms of what you're talking about. They're going to call their $1.2 billion complex the Intuit Dome. The whole thing costs $1.2 billion to build, and they're going to get back $500 million of it just because they add the name Intuit on the top. But in terms of how much money marketing costs these days, it might make sense for that company. Uh, Intuit, financial management tech company, trades on the NASDAQ. How about $156.4 billion market cap? I mean, some of these companies, right? We've talked about it with Amazon before. 
you're worth so much money that you make a decision like this, and if the market likes it, sometimes you make up the cost of that. So we're dealing with a $156 billion company right now. You've got 273 million shares outstanding, right? You get a $2 lift in this company, and you make it all back just like that. Now, we got a bid ask it spanning it. That's not going to be a real move. But the point is, for the money that they have, for the market capitalization they have, uh, not a big deal. I remember when Amazon bought Whole Foods for however much money it was, and it wasn't much going years back compared to some of the dollar terms that are thrown around now. Uh, Amazon stock went up so much the day they bought Whole Foods that they could have paid for it like two or three times just in the market capitalization, something like that, that they created. But still, staggering numbers when you're selling naming rights for half a billion dollars uh, these days. But marketing, marketing, not inexpensive to say the least. All right, folks, we got the markets right near flat. All in the red, though, we got the NASDAQ negative by nine points, S&P's negative by just one, the Dow negative by 11. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back for the market open. Be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with tom o'brien and using his best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system david white has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. All right, folks, we got markets open and we got a little bit of negative action to kick things off right out of the gate. I'm putting it on a minute chart to see the drop. And there you go, folks. We got the NASDAQ 100 just dropping 50 points in a heartbeat. We got the S&Ps right now dropping about 10 points in the last five minutes or so. You got the Dow negative 60 points. Russell catching a bid, a little bit of a divergence there with the Russell positive by five points. Bitcoin 
trading at 47,260. These are minute charts I have up here as well. They're going to be a little spotty at times because of that. Gold catching a bid on the open as well. Silver, negative 13 cents right now. We jump to notes and bonds, kind of hanging out where we were coming into the open. We got the 10 year negative 10 ticks at 132.24 right now. And that's correlating to a yield of 1.37%, pretty much right where we started the program off. Um, but man, you're looking for fireworks today. We got them right out of the gate as we got movement all across the board uh, on the indices. All right, jumping over to another story that caught my eye on Bloomberg today. Uh, speaking of what should be illegal, uh, the headline, the hottest, and I guess this was out yesterday, but I didn't catch it until last night. We're getting ready for the program this morning. The hottest tax break for the rich is a middle-class retirement account. Congress has got to get together and do something about this, folks. You want to talk about an easy way to make sure we're collecting taxes. Um, there's no reason why the ultra rich should be able to have access to retirement accounts to eliminate all taxes that you have to pay to the tune of millions and millions, if not billions of dollars. Uh, more than $279 billion, billion with a B, sits in IRAs with at least $5 million each. Folks, those are tax-free piggy banks that you get to take that money out and never pay taxes on it. It gets to grow tax free. Uh, I love a Roth account. I have a Roth account myself. I encourage you if you have the ability to look into a Roth account and see if it is right for you. But it's not supposed to be an avenue for the ultra rich to avoid taxes, folks. They have limitations in here. Um, and I'm going to scroll a little bit to talk about them. And we're all somewhat familiar with them. Um, but I'm getting down getting down yeah so officially okay officially talk about a disclaimer word uh you can't contribute more than six thousand dollars to your iras this year or seven thousand dollars if you're over 50 and those who earn more than two hundred and eight thousand can't contribute to the roth at all um when talking to people about a roth and encouraging them to consider it one of the things i say is this is one of the few areas they they really clamp down who has access um, to put money into it, right? You can only put $6,000 a year into it, okay? So you, you, you miss that opportunity, it's gone. And you can only do that if you're earning an income under a certain threshold. 208,000 is still a pretty decent income, but it's not a million dollar income earner, right? If you're making a million bucks a year, you officially don't have access to contributing to a Roth IRA. Here's the catch, which is why money in politics ruins everything, okay, is that in 2006, getting into it, Congress, good old Congress, made it possible for anyone, including those with multi-million dollar traditional IRA accounts, to convert them into Roth accounts. The problem here is tax codes get so difficult, right? This one is super simple, okay? A high schooler of any aptitude could create a simple one-line catchphrase that could eliminate the ability to people to have multi-million dollar accounts. Now, you have the ability to convert multi-million dollar IRA accounts to Roth accounts. The catch is you have to pay the taxes for that on any of those funds because you're putting into a tax-free account, but then you get to grow that tax-free for as long as you want. I mean, I think you got to start taking withdrawals at like 79 or something like that. Uh, and we've all heard the Peter Thiel story where he's got $5 billion in his, okay? There's no reason why they couldn't have said, hey, we're going to put a cap on this. Anybody who's got maybe more than 5, 10, 15, 25 million dollars in their IRA loses some of those benefits, but they didn't. And they didn't purposely, folks, okay? Anybody could have seen the writing on the wall when you said that people could put IR uh 401k money, okay? That they could put IRA money into I'm getting back down to the exact verbiage that they're using. Yeah. Anybody with a 401k could put that money into it and it just grows tax-free. Uh, that's that's an avenue that just makes no sense, folks. You shouldn't have an IRA worth 10, 25, 50 million, 100 million dollars uh, where you're just paying no taxes whatsoever. And hopefully they, they solve that one. I mean, it's just crazy. We've heard about Peter Thiel. I think he's got $5 billion, $5 billion, folks, in a, in a tax-free IRA. Talking about the mega rich making billions tax-free. And it was done purposely. That's the thing. There's a lot of things. It's like, oh, we didn't see the loophole, right? This was done purposely in 2006. And there's a lot of brilliant people in Congress. And there's no way they didn't know that that was going to be a possibility for people to convert money into a Roth IRA um, and then have the ability to grow it to whatever they wanted. Now, you know, you could also make the argument that you're playing games with this when you got private companies that you're putting money into. Teal, the biggest one uh, of note 
in terms of sliding down. I think he he ran his PayPal investment to the tune of, let's find it. Within one year, he had $1,664 worth of PayPal that he put into his Roth IRA. And because he's such an astute investor, uh, Mr. Thiel jumped up to $3.8 million versus one year. And then what did he do? He took that $3.8 million and he probably put it in the likes of Facebook and Palantir. I mean, he's got $5 billion in his Roth and the guy's worth $7 billion. He's managed to basically protect his entire wealth into a Roth IRA, which was designed for middle class families, all because Congress purposely allowed him to. That's the point, folks. Hold your elected officials accountable. Uh, it's garbage that that was able to happen. And it hits us all. OK, we talk about, you know, we got a debt limit coming up right now. OK, and there's arguments on both sides. Right. We spend a lot of money um, and we got some big debt problems. OK. This is an easy solve, and hopefully Congress gets together and does something about it because, I mean, they talk about Dustin Moskowitz, the co-founder of Facebook. He's worth $27 billion. Well, he's got a Roth IRA approaching a quarter billion dollars. Yeah, it's not to the same tune of Peter Thiel's, but why are we allowing retirement accounts worth quarter billion dollars that we won't tax when easily that could have been prevented with some type of disclaimers out there um, in terms of caps that they might have. Now, what Democrats are looking at out there is that they're looking at maybe capping that number where you start to lose some of the benefit. I believe it is about 5 million or 10 million. Here we go. Uh, Democrats in Washington trying to thwart the end of the ever larger IRAs, uh, and that is limits on their use by the wealthy, including a provision that would impose restrictions on retirement accounts whose value exceeds $10 million. Anybody who's got a $10 million Roth out, out there, folks, they're okay with paying taxes above that level. And we'll leave it at that. All right, what else we got going on? Speaking of ultra-wealthy or lack of ultra-wealthy, uh, Pinduo Duo, that name, Pretty catchy name, but uh, not too catchy for the China mogul that loses $27 billion in the world's biggest wealth drop. And we've talked about it. I mean, these companies, they're all just mammoth through the floor. You look at Baba as the market all falls apart. Now, these getting a little bit of a lift. We'll go back to a year daily. Um, but you're talking about getting cut in half from a year ago on Alibaba. Uh, what is Pinduo Duo? PDD, maybe? There it is, PDD. Uh, more than cut in half, pin duo duo. You go from 212 down to a low just recently of 74. Uh, and it might not stop there, folks. China, the whole landscape has changed, all right? Um, Xi over in China, he doesn't care about tomorrow's prices for these equities. He cares about the Communist Party in China controlling that country for the next 10 to 20 years while he's in control. Keep that in your mind as you think about this. Now, he wants a successful economy. OK, he wants these companies to be successful, but he's got a goal to be the dictator of China for years, if not decades to come. And, and the market's waking up to that. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets in negative territory, catching a little bit of a bid right now off the lows. Taking a look at the S&P, we spiked to 44.50. We're up five points or so. You get the NASDAQ 100. Catching a small bump off the bottom that we had there. We traded to a low of 15,408. We're about 28 points above that. And you get the Dow and the Russell back in the green right now. We take a look at notes and bonds, always looking at the interest rates. It's continuing to slide, folks. We got a yield right now, 1.38%, the yield on that 10-year. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Be interesting to see how this shakes out today as you get the FDA uh, panel meeting today to debate and vote on the Pfizer and BioNTech's application to offer booster shots to the general public. Uh, it's been interesting, this one. I've been following it a lot in terms of the debate. You have Israel out there plowing ahead with their booster shots, talking about potentially waning data in terms of data, pointing to waning um, efficacy of some of the vaccines, pointing to a booster. We've already authorized boosters for some of the more vulnerable, vulnerable members of the country, but then you got scientists out there saying they need more data, doesn't necessarily point to the waning data, uh, the waning effect of the vaccines when it comes to preventing uh, more severe disease, um, impacts that might bring you to the hospital. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this shakes out in terms of where this comes out. Uh, the vote by the agency's vaccines and related biological product advisory committee scheduled for around 2.30 today comes as some scientists, including at least two at the FDA, say they aren't entirely convinced every American who has received a Pfizer vaccine needs the extra dose at this time. So a little bit of a battle inside there. We'll see where that comes out. You're going to get that news at about 2.30 today. Not sure it'll move the market, um, but interesting as it shakes out for our protocols for the vaccinations as they press forward. All right, let's take a look at some of the equities that are moving today. We're going to kick it off with a little football overseas, a little soccer. Uh, Manchester United, they're out with their numbers. Quarterly loss of 5.9% narrower than what it lost a year ago. That's kind of a contrived sentence. I made a 15.9% increase in revenue. Uh, again, a year ago, not really comparable. Uh, Manchester United not providing full year revenue or earnings guidance due to the uncertainty. I've said it many times before, folks, if you're not providing guidance at this point, you're not doing your due diligence as a an executive. Yeah, any executive would not want to provide guidance. You should be able to provide some type of guidance right now. Um, there is volatility in the future, but we have a lot of knowledge in terms of where things may go with the economy at this point uh, to at least provide guidance, right? I mean, everything was so up in the air a year ago that you couldn't fault executives. I remember saying this at the time to my dad, saying any executive that didn't pull their guidance wasn't doing a good job because it was basically a get out of jail free card. You weren't being punished for pulling your guidance last year because even the market said, hold on, everything changed. We gotta, you know, you can't fault them for pulling the guidance when who could decide where we're gonna be when we got a pandemic we've never been in before. That's not the case, folks. We're a year and a half into this, all right? 
companies have flourished or failed as a result of the executives being able to meander and navigate um, this exceptionally difficult period of time that we're in. But you can't make the argument that you can't make educated guesses at this time about where we'll be in the future, which is what guidance is, right? It's an educated guess using the available information at your disposal of where we will be in the future. You have enough information to make that. Nonetheless, Manchester United trading up by about 1.8% today. Invesco, they're in talks to merge with State Street's asset management unit. People were familiar with the matter spoke to the journal. Deal's not imminent, might not happen just yet as well, but IVZ is Invesco. They're their shares, up about 5.5% on that possible deal coming out. Take two. Yeah, they're down. They got a downgrade from BMO, says the stock uh, is now a market perform from an outperform. Earnings estimates for Take Two had been on the high end of the street forecast, but it said that now less confident following a series of video game release delays. Take Two. Uh, Fast Market did a great uh, talk about it. I think it was earlier this week. Time flies. Maybe it was last week. Talking about the gaming stocks. I think it was earlier this week. Uh, Take Two down one point. 2%. We'll pull up Activision as well. Pretty much flat right now. Activision at 79.26. What else we got going on here? Eli Lilly, one approval for the expansion of the user of the emergency youth authorization for its COVID-19 treatment uh, being used in patients could have a high risk infection after being exposed to someone with COVID. And that's uh, Eli Lilly, L-L-Y. A little bit lower with the market right now, down about four tenths percent. U.S. Steel, they're going to build a new plant, a new steel mill with construction beginning next year. Production plan to kick off in 2024. It's really remarkable how some of these companies, right? They're going to build a plant and they're going to start producing things in about two years. The move comes amid a booming demand for steel as well as prices that have roughly quadrupled since the summer of 2020. But anytime you're putting big time money into a capital investment like that, that's going to take years to pay off. The market's saying, hold on a second. I don't want to wait years. We're down 5.1% for U.S. Steel. Taking a look at this chart, man quite a resurgence uh the better part of 2020 we spend in single digits you take off really when we get the efficacy data right you do start to trend higher in september of last year about a year ago things really take off when you get the efficacy data in november you plow higher to a high of above 30 bucks just recently but just like that you give back 20 percent. i've talked about it before folks we got some big equities down 20 percent from the highs U.S. Steel now joining that as they are down 20% just from where we were trading at a month ago. Uh, okay, that's it. We'll start from there. And uh, what else we got going on? Let's see where we are. How about Google? This one's interesting. So Google Cloud, um, the guy running Google Cloud, Thomas Curian. I think he came from Oracle. Where are we at? Let me slide down here. I believe he came over from Oracle. And he is, uh... All right, I was reading this earlier. I'm pretty sure. Well, I'll pull it up. Nonetheless, they are, uh, they're they're not uh, afraid to make some waves over there in Google. And as an investor, that's what you'd want to see. Um, this article talked about that he's reorganizing and he's sidelining some long-tenured Google employees in an attempt to streamline the tech technical units. Now, I think he has in here that one of the people he sidelined, uh, there's a joke among Google employees that longtime middle managers and executives can sit comfortably in their positions for as long as they want despite changing business needs thanks to the cultural bureaucracy. That seems to be changing. If you want to complete, compete in the cloud sector, folks, you better not just be bringing those employees on that were there from day one because that just might not be getting it done. It's just that simple. Doesn't mean that those employees are going to get fired or anything like that. Uh, he removed, let's see, Eyal Manor, who's been at the company more than 14 years and worked with cloud for five years. He saw the app management service Anthos, which Google hopes will give it an edge against the rivals. Uh, and Manor will look for other areas inside the company to work. Um, the reorganization also, here's one, effectively sidelines Urs Holes, not familiar, one of Google's first 10 employees. 10 employees. Doesn't that guy get like a gold chair to sit on, man? You're, you're, you're one of the first 10 employees in Google, and you walk in one day, and somebody who's been with the company for a year or two says, I'm sorry, but we're going to be removing you from your day-to-day -day responsibilities in favor of a more strategic role. You know, again, he's not gone, but that's probably what, this, what it takes at this time, folks. The cloud was not even around when Google came to be when he was hired um, for the 10 employees. But Google, if they want to catch up to Microsoft, if they want to catch up 
to Amazon, the big dog, yeah, they, they better have the best and the brightest up there in terms of what they have going on. And Google not afraid with the man at the helm to uh, make a little waves there. And I'm going to slide down. We'll finish this up because uh, it was interesting in terms of where this gentleman came from. Yeah, when he hired him in 2008, it came as a shock because he was the least googly person to be a leader at the company. We'll, we'll take a look at this a little bit more when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. It's Triple Witching Friday. We got expirations going on and we got markets accelerating to the downside. S&P is negative by 24 points. That's half a percent right now. NASDAQ 100 down almost three quarters percent. Dow off three tenths percent. And you get the Russell barely in the red by about one tenth percent. Jumping back to the S&P, you see the acceleration. It's interesting that we really had those highs coming into Labor Day, right? Labor Day was sitting at 45 48 we're solid 110 points below that level you take a look at the nasdaq 100 in terms of where we are what did i just have up there uh you're talking about a price of 15,396 uh you're coming down to the lows of yesterday let's just zoom in on the last few days of this trading week lows of yesterday before the market accelerated higher you're talking about a low of 15,358 
Now, what is that, about 30 points or so, 35 points where we're at. And then what's hanging out there is that open from Wednesday, 15,307. Uh, some quick action across the board right now. Crude pulling back as well. We're down to 71.58. Gold continuing lower, coming right down to almost where we had the lows of yesterday, 17.53. And as we get some negative action in the market, taking a look at the VIX. Volatility index spike into 19.52. Uh, we'll see if we get a 20 handle as uh, our man Basil Chapman likes to say, he's coming up next, folks. The day is young. Got to love it. Uh, look for some volatility. Got to love this start to the market if you're a trader. We've had both action in terms of two-way action in this market for a lot of the days that we've had yesterday, right? Look at that sell-off on the open. Things look pretty dire in the market. Just so strong in terms of resurging in the S&P. But we give it all back just like that. We got a two-way market right now. Uh, NASDAQ similar action as well jumping back to that google story real quick so he did come over from oracle uh sliding down let's see yes uh Curian has a reputation for a no frills at times militant leadership style at oracle when google hired google hired him in 2018 uh came as a shock um if I was an investor in Google, folks, that's what I'd love to see. I mean, they have a lot of work to do to catch up with the likes of Microsoft and Amazon. And uh, it seems like he's willing to do what's necessary to get the people in there that might be needed to uh, to grow that cloud sector in Google. With the market down about nine tenths percent today. All right, folks, hold on to your seats. It's Triple Witch in Friday. We got big action. We got markets in the red. We got Basil up next. We got fast market at 11. We got Larry Pesavento, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Friday, everybody.